Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I know this is like not necessarily the best time to to go live, but it's literally probably the only tense I'm going to have um, until um, later on tonight. And I'm thinking later on tonight, assuming that uh, I don't end up pulled into something else. So um, it's it's just been a, a whirlwind um, the last, what, five, six days and, and, and since last night. So um, I wanted to take a second just to kind of update everybody, kind of tell you you know, what's happening and what I've seen. There are some things that I'm not going to be able to share with you today because they are still ongoing. There's still uh, some stuff that we're, that I'm digging into. Um, I've had some really great conversations with some, um, some incredible people since I got here who have shared information with me that's extremely important. Um, you know, the way that I look at this thing with Ballot Health here um, in the Tri-Cities area is that, you know, there's going to be a long game and a short game. Um, you know what I mean? There's going to be things that need to happen right now, and then there are going to be things that, you know, just have to keep going. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I just dived right in, didn't I? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, so here's what I want to encourage um, the residents and the, and the citizens that are here in the Tri-Cities area. Good morning, Terry. Um, one of the things that I need to tell you guys is do not look for this to be a quick fix. Oh, you know, we're just going to swoop in and in a matter of, you know, a week, get this fixed. That is not going to be the case. Um, one of the things, uh, good morning, Scotty. One of the things that I want you to keep in mind, it took Ballot Health uh, a couple of years to get this COPA agreed to, approved, and issued. Um, it is going to take longer than a week for us to pull it apart, unravel things, and start to be able to, to get some resolution and some protections for the people that live in this community. So here's what I will tell you on a daily basis, and I know that sounds really crazy, but every day, folks, you need to take five minutes out of your day and email the FTC and email the DOJ. Like that needs to be your civic duty. And it's not just about your civic duty to do it. If you are in all interested in the healthcare and well being of yourself and your families and the people in this community, you have to do that. Um, one of the things that was really significant as I've been pouring through all of the FTC reports, um, I need for you all to understand exactly how strongly they were against this merger. The FTC felt so strongly about this merger that they sent people to testify here in Johnson City to say, do not do this. And, you know, everybody keeps talking about the COPA. Well, I need you to understand the COPA, both in Tennessee and the cooperative agreement that's out of uh, out of Virginia, they only last for 10 years. They only last for 10 years. And so let's just let's just let's just wave a magic wand for a minute and pretend <laughs> and I would definitely have to pretend that ballot health has the best interest of, of, of this region in mind. Right. Um, which I can tell you emphatically they do not. But let's just pretend for a minute. You know, let's twinkle our noses and, you know, I dream a genie some shit and, and just, you know, think that they do. After 10 years, they have no commitment to you. After 10 years, they have no commitment to the state of Virginia. They have no commitment to the state of Tennessee. Legally, because of this COPA, at the end of this 10 years, whatever they wanna do with your hospitals, whatever they wanna do with your care, they can legally do it and have no repercussions from the state. I need for you to understand that, okay? Um, that is one of the things that um, the FTC Assistant Director for uh, D Division 4 Mergers said in her testimony. She said, do not do this. Their commitments are temporary um, at best. So I want to share with you some things that were encouraging for me and some things that were disappointing for me, some things that were um, infuriating for me since I've been here and the things that I've learned about the COPA how it's being uh, overseen and monitored. I want to talk to you about the mayor and alderman's meeting that I attended last night because there were things about that that absolutely um, were encouraging and things about that that I was just in disbelief and shock. So let's start with the COPA because yesterday I spent uh, 26 minutes on the phone with Larry Fitzgerald who uh, Larry Fitzgerald was uh, hired by the state to oversee the COPA. 
And, um, and they, I ended up calling the attorney general's office back. Uh, and I spoke with Emily yesterday because when I spoke with her last week, she had told me that someone was going to get in touch with me. Uh, and of course they did not. And so I called her back and said, Hey, Emily, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still looking for the person that's supposed to talk to me about the COPA. And she said, Oh, so no one called you. And I said, no. And she said, well, let me reach out to them and see who they're going to have call you. That was her thing. And I said, well, can you tell me the name of the person so that I know Know who I'm expecting to hear from and she said well I can't really tell you that I don't really know I just reached out to them whoever them may be and uh, and and they're gonna have somebody call you and I said okay fine so it turns out that they had Larry Fitzgerald call me and uh, and here's the pieces of information that he was that he shared with me directly yesterday so this is from his lips to my ears um, so in our conversation yesterday Larry Fitzgerald informed me that he that the way he oversees the COPA he's part-time this is not his full-time job <laughs> this is not his full-time job he's part-time and he's paid and he's paid by the state um, and so he's hired independently outside of ballot um, and I said well what do people do if they are really and truly concerned about COPA violations and COPA compliance and he recommended that we contact Gary Miller Right. He said Gary Miller is the person that, you know, public comments go to. He's the person. He has a team. He said he has a team of seven or eight people um, and he reports to the board for audit. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. Who does Gary Miller work for? <laughs> I wanted to know, does he work for Valid? That's the question that I asked. And this is the way that Larry Fitzgerald chose to answer that question. He said, well, his paycheck comes from Valid. And I said, wait a minute. So I just want to understand this. Gary Miller is the COPA compliance person, like the main person with a team of seven to eight people, but his paycheck comes from Ballot. <laughs> and he said, well, yeah, but he doesn't report to Alan Levine. He reports to the, to the audit, to the board for audit. And I said, okay, so this is the thing that gets me. So I need y'all to understand this. This is the way that the COPA is set up for the states as well. So the states are going to spend uh, approximately $5 million um, a year to do this COPA compliance. Okay. And so um, in this, now the way that Virginia originally had their setup, uh, Terry Kilgore was quoted as saying he had concerns about, uh, about Tennessee's strict uh, guidelines and commitment requirements because he was concerned about the, impact that that was going to have on the merger and ballot's ability to be successful. Virginia's guidelines and restrictions only encompass 19 pages. Tennessee's was 119 pages. And so if you do the comparison, Tennessee's COPA uh, oversight would take about uh, $5 million a year. Virginia's would take about a $1 million a year. Here's what I can tell you is that in January of this year, Terry Kilgore um, sponsored legislation called HB 6. Six, three. It's HB 663. It passed March 1st of this year. And what that um, piece of legislation does is it requires ballot health to repay the state for the COPRA oversight. Now, here's the thing. This means for me, and this is just the way that my brain works, call me crazy. This means to me there's the state has no interest. So follow me. Let's just say if I'm the state and I have to spend $5 million to ensure that this company actually has the well-being of the public, like that's the purpose of the COPA. It's a certificate of public advantage. So if I'm the state and I have to spend $5 million of our money to make sure that this company does right by the citizens of this of this re region, then I'm going to make sure that shit is done and it's done well and it's done effectively. But if I'm going to spend $5 million and I know the person I'm investigating is going to give me that $5 million back, what am, what, what, where am I invested? Where do I have, where do, where do I have a, a risk? Where's there any risk for me? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So the way that I look at it, and this is what I said to the, to the mayor and alderman's board last night, is if I'm paying you to grade my papers, aren't you going to give me an A? <laughs> Now, there are people who go, oh, the state wouldn't do that. You know what? I didn't think the state would approve any of this shit to start with, but they did. So, you know, you'll just have to forgive me for not trusting the state because they haven't proven to be very thorough and very thoughtful in the protections of its citizens so far. Okay. 
So when I found that information out yesterday about the COPA, it was incredibly disheartening to me to find out that Larry Fitzgerald, this is his part-time job. Gary Miller is full-time, but his, his check comes from ballot and then the states are reimbursed from ballot. So to me, that's a little bit of conflict of interest. Just call me crazy, but you know, and, and listen, y'all, I'm, I'm being really transparent. I'm just a normal person. I don't have a background in, in hospital mergers. I don't have a background in legislation. I just have the ability to read and comprehend. And, and I apply good old country common sense when I start to connect the dots. <laughs> so this is the way that I see this thing rolling out. Now, here was the thing. Um, after the uh, meeting last night, I did have a couple of aldermen come up to me and they gave me their cards and they thanked me for coming out and they asked me to email them some of the information that I've been able to put together um, in reference to, you know, HMA, Alan Levine's history with HMA, the court case that the Department of Justice just settled, uh, as well as what the FTC had to say about this merger. Um, and, uh, and I have found two independent in, uh, reports, two independent investigations that were done that were also submitted. Um, and, uh, and all of them, listen, the only people who were for this merger were people that were being paid uh, in some sort of way by ballot health. Everyone else was screaming at the top of their lungs, do not let this happen. Uh, good morning, Donna, LaDonna. And so, uh, so here's the deal. So I'm going to do that today. Um, I did approach the Kingsport mayor and I was, I was, I'm going to be really frank and I'm probably going to piss some people off with this, but I, I, I mean, it's okay. Um, here's what he didn't say. Okay. That, well, this is what he did say. I happen. I was carrying in my hand, um, Where's my paperwork? Give me one second. Give me one second. I'm going to grab this for you guys. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So I was carrying in my hand, well, a lot of stuff, but the one piece is, oh, I gave it to him. I gave it to him. Here's what, here's what I was holding in my hand. I was holding in my hand the testimony from the assistant, um, director for mergers from division four of the FTC. When she came down uh, in November of 2016, they, 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 they did another report in July of 2017, July 18, 2017, um, really, really expressing concern about this. And this is what, this is what, um, it says, it says, if allowed to merge, the combined hospital system would have a dominant market share of inpatient services and significant market share in several outpatient and physician specialty service lines. The loss of competition that would result from the merger is likely to have significant negative effects on the hospital prices, quality of care, and the availability of services. As FTC staff explained in its initial and supplemental public comments, the applicants have failed to meet their burden of proof of demonstrating that the purported benefits of the COPA will outweigh the likely harm from the proposed merger. I could go on and on, but so here's the deal. Here's, um, let me put this down. So I had the testimony, the direct testimony uh, in my hand, and I asked the mayor of Kingsport had he read any of the FTC reports and any of the FTC comments regarding this merger? And he looked at me, no bullshit, guys. This is what he said. He said, well, I just have to be honest with you. This is not a job. <laughs> this is public service. He was like, I work, I, I, I work elsewhere for a living. That's why we rely on boards to tell us what's in the best interest of the community. So you're the mayor of the city, uh, but you rely on the someone else to tell you what's in the best interest of your constituents. This is not your job, sir. This is just public service. Those, that's what he said to me. I'm not kidding. I wouldn't lie. I'm telling you the truth. I wish I'd recorded it, <laughs> but I didn't. And I will tell you this, someone else besides me asked him, the mayor, and, and the other aldermans had they read the had they read the FTC reports and they all said no none of them have read what the FTC had to say about this merger everybody set back on their laurels they set back on their laurels and they allowed people on these boards who are who are being paid who are in the middle of all of it to tell them what to do nobody did any research Nobody did any research. If you had, you would have known that Alan Levine was the was the president of the Florida group of HMA. That means he was he was the president of 
all of Florida's operations for HMA. Guys, they just they just were designated by the by the DOJ to pay $260 million for fraud, for medical fraud. I pulled up an article today. Now let me just say this. This case is still pending. So I can't tell you definitively that this in fact happened. What I can tell you is what they're describing is exactly what HMA just admitted to in these documents. Okay. So here's what is, here's what's happening. There's another case that, uh, that was filed December, December 19th, 2017. Uh, wait, sorry. Let me get to the right one. So this is, yeah, this is a blog. This is uh, a blog. This is about a, uh, there's more whistleblowing. So Alan Levine was over Broward County, okay? <laughs> Broward County. And um, now they're talking about more whistleblower lawsuits are filed separately by Broward County's deposed CEO and chairman. And this these are people who came on after Alan left because Alan left and came here in January, 2014, okay? So, Here's what they're saying. They're saying, hold on. All right, where do I want to get you? I'm going to start right here and I'm going to read this to you. And then I'm going to explain to you what part of what they're saying. So the whole DOG thing, you know, I put up that link and I want you guys to read it. Okay. I want you guys to read it. Basically what the Department of Justice says is that there was a corporate wide scheme from HMA, which is the company that Alan Levine um, worked for before he came here. He was the SVP. He handled government relations. He was also the president of the Florida group, and he was in charge of District 3, which was like, depending upon what you read, anywhere from 22 to 26 hospitals, okay? Here's the thing, guys. This is what this is one of the things they are saying happened during the time that he was here there during the time that he was there at HMA um, because somebody was fired over this. The intrigue involves the ultimately successful effort of a Fort Myers based 21st century oncology, a large anti-cancer company financially tied to Governor Scott to obtain an exclusive 25 year non-bid contract to provide lucrative radi radiation oncology services at Broward Health. In his original complaint, DePetri said, that 21st century lobbyist William Billy Rubin, a, con a confidant of Governor Scott, bribed then CEO Frank Nask to support the deal with kickbacks of financial and job security and the governor's political protection. The governor appoints Broward's health commissioners who hire the CEO. And at the time, Nask's salary was $680,000 plus performance bonuses and benefits. If you all don't know this, in 2015, Bart Hove and Alan Levine, when they were the CEO of Wellmont and the CEOs of Mountain States Health Alliance, each of them made, one of them made $1.3 million, the other made $1.4 million. Their base salaries were $800,000, give or take a little bit, and they got 500 grand in bonuses. And then you wonder why your hospitals were in financial trouble. Come on, guys. Is anybody else in the Southwest Virginia, Northeast Tennessee area making a million dollars a year? Are y'all making a million? I'm not making a million. What I know, the people around here are good if they are making $13 to $16 an hour. You got nurses right now at Ballot Health that are making $13 an hour. You got brand new nurses at Ballot Health that are only making $18 an hour. I'm just throwing that out there. So listen, a copy of De, P De, uh, De Petro's amended complaint was filed November 22nd. This is last November, so a year ago, um, in their bankruptcy case. And they are seeking to avoid uh, having his potential fraud claim discharged. It has not been filed um, in the pending whistleblower case that's going on. But here's what I want to, this is, what, this is the part I want to get to you. The suit contends that 21st Century and its former CEO, Dr. Daniel uh, DeSorzetz, illegally schemed as early as 2006 to take over radiation oncology services at Broward Health. Now, remember, Alan was there from 2010 to 2014. Here's what it says. This is what the suit says. Mind you, this is still pending litigation. I'm not saying that this is fact. So just listen to this. So it says that uh, that back then, 
Dora Sets promised then CEO Alan Levine that in return for accepting 21st Century's proposal, the company's doctors would refer high volumes of patients to Broward Health for surgeries, admissions, and other services. It is illegal under federal law to offer or make referrals of Medicaid patients in return for anything of value. Now listen, I cannot tell you that this happened. What I can tell you is that Health Management Associates just agreed to pay $260 million for, for paying people and for making bribes and for making deals to increase admissions to improperly and illegally bill Medicaid and have Medicaid pay those bills. With this right here is exactly what that just is. Now, can I tell you that this specifically did in fact happen? No. What I can tell you, it is currently in a lawsuit that is pending in court. That was that was filed last year. That's what I can tell you definitively. So when you start to ask me, how can we prove that Alan knew when he worked at HMA? What I can tell you is he was over all of HMA's Florida, um, Florida dealings. Right. He oversaw he was he was the president of the Florida group. And he ran Division Three, specifically overseeing 22, let's just take the lowest number, 22 hospitals. Part of the De Department of Justice's um, investigation uncovered that they actually had a customized um, system. They had a customized uh, system, like a computer system, so that what would happen is, is when is when you go to the emergency room and they put in your insurance information and they put in your diagnosis, depending upon your age, because the goal was if you were 65 and older and you were on Medicaid, the goal was to have 50% of those patients admitted. <laughs> that was their goal. And if you weren't 65 and older, the goal was to have 15 to 20% of Medicaid patients admitted into the hospital. And this computer system actually had a color coded system that said, hey, this person meets this criteria. You need to admit them into the hospital. And if the doctors didn't do that or if the doctors overrode that in the system, it was Tracked, and those doctors were penalized. And the way that this case, these cases came to light is two of the doctors that were fired hired an attorney, a whistleblower out of Atlanta, and that's where all of these cases started. And it was eight civil lawsuits that the Department of Justice took over. And the Department of Justice took over those cases right when Alan Levine left HMA and came here. I talked to that attorney yesterday for 20 minutes on the phone. I personally talked to that attorney for 20 minutes yesterday on the phone. There is no question in my mind that Alan Levine knew what was happening at HMA Health. It's, there's no question in my mind that he was involved in that process. So you got to understand the Department of Justice settled this as a civil issue, and there's a three-year non-prosecutorial agreement that was part of it. The only division of HMA that pled guilty to criminal charges is out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I, I will put up the links to the DOJ articles. I don't know that you guys will take the time to read them. I encourage you to do that. I will put up the links to the FTC reports um, and their testimony as well. I encourage you to read them. What I encourage you to do more than anything right now is to email the FTC and to email the DOJ. We are a baby HMA situation. So like they're just getting started in this community building what they were doing in Florida. Why do you think they're so busy advocating the enrollment of Medicaid patients in Southwest Virginia? Why do you think that Terry Kilgore, who was against Medicaid expansion for years upon years upon years, miraculously decided that he, that he all of a sudden supports Medicaid expansion in Southwest Virginia, and he's going to help enroll the 41,000 people down here that actually qualify for it. And then Ballot Health's going to turn around and give him a damn award for doing so. I'm just asking guys, you have to start blowing up the phones and um, let me, <laughs> here's the thing. I've only been researching this stuff for about five or six days at this point. And I truly believe we're just getting started. I've had other information and, uh, and other, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting with three people today. I'm telling you guys, um, I will, and Michelle, here's what I will tell you is, um, I am supposed to do an on-camera interview with, um, with a telephone, um, with, uh, one of the TV stations, 
uh, here in the next couple of days. That's supposed to happen. My question is going to be whether or not they're too scared to do it. So we'll see. So this is the thing too. I've got people telling me that they're messaging me and I'm not getting all of my messages. And I think that it may be because there's so many happening right now. So let me just say this. Don't friend request me. Just follow because the friend requests, I, there's so, there's, I don't even know how many at this point. Follow. And then, um, and here's the thing. If you want to email me, I'm going to give you two emails. And this is, this is something that's really important. If you are going to send me any information that you consider to be, um, uh, of a critical nature, something that you wouldn't want, you know, because you know when you send an email, Gmail reads that shit, right? They all scan the email. So if you were going to send me something that you that you want to remain private and protected, you need to use my secure email address. Um, and I'm trying to think of the best way to, to put it out there. Um, Okay, so uh, you can email me at, so I see, I don't want to say it like this because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that people will start to try to hack it or fish it. Um, how can I do this? Um, email me at thedannycook at gmail.com. The Danny Cook, T H E Danny D A N I C O O K, the Danny Cook at gmail. And I will then give you the secure email address. OK, um, I will then give you the secure email address, because if you're messaging me on here and I'm not getting it, this is the one way that I can make sure that you get it. Um, Luann, I do know about the meeting on Monday. I have been invited to that and I will be there. My understanding is that Terry Kilgore is going to be there. My understanding is also that um, it is also that uh, Alan Levine is going to be there. So we shall just see what happens. Um, it's OK. Well, I know I, I did tell people to PM me that, but the issue is people are saying that they're messaging me, but I'm not getting them. So email me, thedannycook at gmail.com, and then I'll give you the secure email address. How's that sound? Um, so other than that, I will tell you that there is uh, there's talks and organization of a rally that's supposed to be being put together. Um, I will be speaking at that rally. And um, yeah, there's a there's a lot. There's many pieces to this conversation. The biggest part of it that I want you guys to talk about, when you talk to the um, FTC and to the DOJ, this is what I want to tell you. Here's, what, here's the biggest piece of this. Follow me. If, if they, um, today, if you're in Hawkins County at 10 a.m., you need to go to the meeting, the commission, commissioner meeting that's happening in, um, in, uh, in Hawkins County. So that you definitively need to do today. Um, but when you talk to them, here's what we need to be talking about. Um, here's what we need to be talking about. I don't believe that ballot health qualifies for state action immunity because the state has shown bias in this, co in this COPA. So in order for them to pass this COPA and, and approve this COPA, um, there, there was legislation passed. So uh, several of your representatives and your senators passed legislation to amend the existing COPA so that Ballard could get it to start with. So that, for me, already shows bias from the state because here's the thing. If I'm the state, I'm not amending my laws just so you can get what you want. If I'm the state, no, it's your burden of proof to show me that you can exist within the existing COPA laws and that this is for the advantage of the public, right? But the state actually passed legislation. Hold on. Um, it was Senate Bill 994, and it that was submitted by, that was sponsored by Norris Crow and Mr. Speaker Ron Ramsey, and it was substituted for House Bill number 1146, and House... Uh, House Bill 1146 was sponsored by Eldred, Harrison, Lundberg, Holsey, Holsclaw, and Hawk. So these are all your government officials, guys, that uh, that were that were making sure that um, that that ballot got this COPA. So the state the state amended laws to make them get the to make them be able to get the COPA right, and then uh, the state's being reimbursed. 
the people who are who are ensuring COPA oversight, the Gary Miller and his team are being paid by ballot. That's an issue for me. I got that information from Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald only works part time, and even though he's paid by the state, the state is being reimbursed by ballot health care for their for their COPA compliance oversight. So ballots fit in the bill for all of this. And here's what I'm here's what I'm starting to understand is everything that they pay for goes their way, right? Um, you asked me about. Um, yeah, somebody post the Hawkins County stuff because I, I am not going to go to that because there's no vote taking place, any of that. It's just not necessary for me. I will be at Scott County's, um, Scott uh, Scott County, Virginia's meeting in Gate City on Monday. Uh, that I will be there for. And um, let me see if I can give you the um, information for Scott County. Scott County is going to be, uh, it's the Board of Supervisors meeting. They're calling a special meeting to discuss the ballot issue. Terry Kilgore will be there. Um, so will Alan, what, from what I'm told. And it will be at, uh, at the Social Service Building on the second floor at 2 p.m. on Monday. Okay. Thank you, Patricia. Okay, folks, that's all I got. I've got like regular work to do. <laughs> regular stuff to do this morning but uh, but I did want to give you guys an update and I will tell you that if you are watching this and you are not in the Northeast Tennessee Southwest Virginia region and you don't think that this applies to you um, or you might be wondering if it does if you have if you live in a rural community and you are finding that you have hospital mergers taking place and there are COPA agreements being passed um, reach out to me and let me know this is something that's happening all across all across the country and uh, and it's something that we definitely need to be taking a look at so uh, I appreciate you guys for, for for listening I hope that this has been a good update I will tell you there are other pieces of this puzzle but I just cannot go into them um, right now until I finish getting um, the research and the facts yes Susan my understanding is that the Scott County meeting is open to the public that is my understanding um, I'm gonna encourage you to not get bogged down in the weeds too much um, when it comes to the trauma centers, legally, let me say this, legally, it, the trauma center is a done deal legally. So legally, if Ballard sticks to their guns and wants to piss everybody off, they can, they can combine the level one trauma centers and move everything to Johnson City because the state agreed to that in the original COPA documents. The state said, yes, you can merge those level one trauma centers and we will not get involved in that decision where you put it, what you do with it. Um, so that that's a done deal legally if they stick to their guns. If they don't, then that's then then that's it to it. Uh, when it comes to the NICU, the NICU was not a part of the original COPA agreement. Um, the state has 90 days to approve that. That was something that I heard directly from Larry Fitzgerald yesterday. The um, ballot health submitted the change in the NICU stuff on November 12th. Now here's the thing: the state has up to 90 days to approve or disapprove the uh, the NICU stuff, but they could they can do it faster. So you need to be reaching out to uh, to the state health department and adamantly uh, expressing the need for us to keep this NICU okay it's not that the COPA can be broken here's the here's the hope folks because the COPA is a legal document at this point the only hope that you have to um, to get this COPA undone is if they if there is a clear and direct violation of the COPA agreements and you have to be able to get Gary Miller or uh, Larry Fitzgerald to say that and and I'm not sure that they have the ability because when we were discussing what those things meant it wasn't very clear the 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 strongest hope that we have of of getting this copa either broken or overseen by someone outside of the team currently doing it is to go through the ftc and get them to do it and say that we don't believe ballot uh agrees uh, qualifies for state action immunity and we don't believe that the state can be trusted to do proper enforcement of the copa compliance Whew. Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> um, I managed to get like five hours of sleep last night, so I've had eight in about two and a half days. So, um, you know, I'm a little bit more revived, re re revitalized. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. So I will tell you that I'm going to be down around um, the Kingsport area today. Uh, so if you're in that area and you have pertinent information or you have things that, you know, are in paper that you want to give to me, um, let's do that. You know, Josh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm sure that something along those lines, that would be a question for the county attorney or the city attorney. That, that, would, be, that would be a question for them. We can dig into that, but I really don't know. 
Um, okay, folks, that's that's legit all I got. And um, I appreciate you all very much. Y'all know the way that I end this thing, right? Be amazing, be light, be love, and I am out of here. Peace.